Thank you, Cynthia. Pleasure to be here. Um, comparative studies and IOL calculation with the Pentacam AXL. Here you can see my financial disclosures and from my team. Um, the Pentacam actually is a device which uh, actually takes into consideration two devices in one. So you, what you see is axial length measurement, IOL power calculation. You have heard a lot about the Scheinfluke imaging systems, anterior chamber analyzer, pachymetry data, which becomes important uh, for screening devices, for a normal practice even, it's very useful, elevation topography maps, cataract analyzer, phakic IOL simulation. I'm sure you talked about the Bale and Ambrosi enhanced ectasia um, map, the holiday reporting device, tomography and corneal optical density, cataract pre-op display, incidents, uh, indices, corneal rings, and various others. So this is a very interesting device because it compares, it has actually so many measurements. So the Pentacam XL takes 100 Scheinfluke imaging within one scan in less than two seconds for all this information. Now important, I think, for us is if you look at axial length measurement, we all are aware of the PCI optical biometry partial coherence interferometer, and you can see how that is done. You all know this technology from the IOL master, and measuring now, I think, worldwide as a standard, the axial length, if we can. Here are the axial length measurement now, which is incorporated in the AXL by Pentacam. You can see here the device, how it performs uh, interoperatively. I'll come to that uh, in a minute. The me measurement and uh, calculation routine, axial lengths and 3D scan measurements are taken in the session, so session on the same measurement axis using the same centering function. The Pentacam uh, captures the axial lengths six times during each exam and measures only if the patient is fixating, which is important because we want to have good measurement. The vertex normally is used as the reference point, and the eye motion during the image process is detected with the pupil camera and corrected during the calculation process. That the 3D model of the anterior chamber is calculated via ray tracing, therefore the optical distortions of each exam are individually corrected. Um, when we first had that land in the prototype, we did a study, a retrospective study, comparing the AXL to 500, uh, IOL Master 500 measurements. Um, because we were um, keen on actually looking for our cataract patients, um, these two variables, which are corneal power and axial lengths, and axial lengths could be measured with the Pentacom, could not be so far, and we were um, anxious to see the outcome in this type of setting. This was the first version, so it's a preliminary study, and we looked at retrospective case series of 136 eyes in patients age 66, requiring cataract surgery, occlusion criteria were below 22 we didn't measure, up, uh, up uh, higher than 26, and then all patients were first measured with the IOL master, then followed by the Pentacam XL, and then the quality, if this was okay, we actually then uh, did the measurement, otherwise we have included the analysis, and we looked at a variety of variabilities, axial lengths, corneal curvature, radius of curvature, anterior chamber depths measured and compared. Analysis was done with statistical methods. Here's the outcome, most important. The mean of this group, 138, was pretty much identical. The mean with the IOL master, 23.81. And if you look at the Pentacam, almost the same. Standard deviation, almost the same. So very comparable. If you look at the other variables, let me quickly go through them. Results are here, and they also the mean difference, the correlation. They show a very good correlation in terms of the steep and the flat meridian ACD. Chamber depths was a little bit different here, and the white-to-white -white measurement. Um, we did this statistically, compared that, the outcome excellent limits of agreement are visible, and for also no significant difference in measurement of other variables requiring for IOL power calculation were found. So in summary, no significant difference was found for the axial length measurement, favorable limits of agreement, and no significant difference when comparing keratometry, ACD, and white-to-white -white measurements. The lens calculation at this point could probably be made in the near future with this device, of course, with future research. 
There is now um, another study, 600 eyes from 600 patients. If both eyes were measured, only one eye was chosen for randomization or by randomization into this study. Uh, there were actually uh, four centers. You can all see them here from Germany and from the U.S. And uh, the left and right distribution you can see here, the mean age, and submitted for publication um, so far. Exclusion criteria, again, good measurements. We wanted to have good measurements. Keratoconus was an exclusion, corneal edema, corneal scars, previous eye surgery. And what you found here is looking through these next five slides, showing you axial length measurement, a very good comparison. As you can see here again, the average with a standard deviation, arithmetic differences, mean absolute differences, range of differences, and to the correlation coefficient uh, showed a very good correlation, almost 100%, as you can see here. And you can also see this in this graph uh, uh, with this um, uh, mathematical uh, outcome here. Axial length comparison, then the um, cornea flat measurement, the curvature flat comparison you can see here again. For the uh, steep measurement, the same. For the average comparison uh, in terms of corneal measurement also. And the ACD comparison here shows actually a little bit different results, but still a correlation coefficient of 0 0.79, so almost 0 0.8. Um, so the summary, excellent or very good agreement of axial lengths and keratometry, moderate agreement for ACD measurements. Conclusion agreement between the two PCI units was good. However, the small but statistically significant difference in the measurement of the corneal power and average and ACD measurement may constant optimization necessary when calculating the internal lens power. Um, this is done here. IOL constant optimization is now done by uh, Professor Heiges. Uh, it's, you can find this under this website, which I pointed out in this presentation here. The IOL calculator in general, plausibility check of the examination. The IOL database uh, with the IOL constants is embedded. Additional IOL can be added manually by yourself. Uh, it's very interesting. 25 surgeons can be defined. 50 favorite, favorite, favorite IOLs can be defined per single surgeon. Not everybody of us needs 50, but a couple of them is good. Each of the 25 surgeons has uh, three templates in this uh, calculator for spheric, aspheric, and multifocal IOLs. So I think a very practical uh, idea. One template for toric and multifocal, one template for post-refractive, individual IOL constant optimization actually possible. Here's a screening IOL power calculator, as you can see here, which summarizes the data which we all know from calculators. You can already see here the different IOLs, and of course, this is the um, advanced or the magnified situation for you to better see. For example, you can see here the residual astigmatism, the IOL toricity, the power of the intraocular lens. There's an iris image and keratometry overlay for toric IOLs, which may be very useful for actually placing toric intraocular lenses. Always keep in mind that this device takes into consideration posterior corneal surface, which many other devices at the moment, for the example, the topographers cannot do. We're just coming out from the course here in astigmatic measurement, and we all agreed at this course in another room that the posterior measurement becomes very important for particular our toric intraocular lens implantation. Here's an IOL calculation printout, which you then have in your files or in your computer. Um, you can see this here. You can see also here for a toric uh, version. So a very useful thing for our day-to-day -day measurement. There is a preliminary outcome study from another group in Germany. They also found here the criteria for IOLs. As you can see here, they uh, researched with IOL master in the Pentacam and looked at three different IOLs, and they were very good in actually, actually better in the Pentacam in determining the um, residual refractive spherical component. So in other words, they were closer to the outcome than in this study with the IOL master. Um, but of course, this is a preliminary study, and of course, they optimized it. There's a fast screening report with the AXL also possible, a great tool to keep the overview of most important variables. 
And this is the pre-op display. Basically, all you need is actually looking at the axial measurement, the total corneal refractive power. This is pointed out here. You find your ACD measurement. You find your white to white. You have the pachymetry map. So a very useful tool now for our day-to-day -day practice. Our standard has become to use this device, particular for refractive surgery. Every cataract procedure now becomes a refractive procedure because we actually correcting for astigmatism and we're correcting for presbyopia. So we have actually refractive cataract surgery. And I think it's very important to do this. The impact on clinical practice, also I touched this in the beginning, not only IOL power calculation can be done, also phakic IOL um, calculation, densiometry and cataract grading, which we're using. And you have heard in the previous talks, of course, is the very important factor of screening for keratoconus uh, in our refractive corneal procedures. Our routine work included this year, basic screening routine, fast screening report, Balin Ambrosio corneal optical densiometry and shine fluke images, eye well selection based on higher order aberration, and for spheric eye well, the um, S40 axial uh, and total refractive corneal power map, which provides a qualitative assessment SIMK versus tonal co total corneal refractive power looks at the astigmatism. And you have the power calculation, documentation, and post-op control, and IOL constant uh, optimization. So I think this is a very useful tool. We're very much looking forward to use this more in our clinical setting, and particularly for improving the outcome for our patients. Thank you. Are there any questions for Dr. Conan?